Hashing out C++ software episode 2. Let's talk a little bit about logging and I guess we'll say decoupling because that's kind of what I'm working with today here on this uh, little piece of software I'm working on. Now I want to make it clear that this series isn't about this program. It's just about uh, decisions made while programming and putting things together. So in the future, you know, we could do episodes on anything, any piece of software. But for now, you know, this is what I'm working on. This is where I thought of the example. So just want to make that somewhat clear. All right. So I have a window system, you know, it just pops up a window uh, so we can draw stuff to it. Um, and it's got a link to the graphics. So at some point you got to do this whole proc thing. And the problem with this is now if you call this within your window class, that means you've now, you now have it directly coupled to well, I don't know, whatever you're calling here, like this would be OpenGL, for example. I have it directly coupled to OpenGL, so it, it makes it less modular. It makes it kind of hard to adapt to a new renderer. For example, you'd have to like hard code in the new renderer stuff. And we don't really want to do that, you know. We want to avoid having to repeat ourselves and hard code and hard couple. I mean, sometimes it's okay, but at some point you got to change it up. And also with logging, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do logging. You can just use standard C outs if you want, but at some point you're going to want at least a basic logging implementation for what you're doing. So I want to start with that. I'll start with showing the logging thing. And then a little later, I'll talk more about decoupling this, uh, this graphics from the window. Essentially, we want the window to have no knowledge of anything OpenGL, like this glue should be gone. This glue is a OpenGL thing. So that'll be our goal with that. All right, so let's make the logging thing first. So to make a log, you know, well, you gotta think about how do you wanna present your log. You can save it to a file, you can put it to console, you could uh, just not do it at all. So those are the basic options. And uh, I'm just gonna put something in here. I'm just gonna make a new file. You can see it over on the right, probably very small for you. And I'm gonna just call it, uh, I suppose logging is a fine title logging.h we're going to make an associated c++ file because that's how i'm doing it in this project i also want to make a video i was thinking about this i'm just going to say it out loud so i'd be sure to remember to do it i want to make a video about the different ways of doing your header and cpp files i know it sounds very corny but there's like two main ways of doing it and uh yeah but i don't want to get too off topic this one let's uh make this logging class uh, I think I'm going to call it logger instead of logging. So just rename this. Now this is going to be a singleton, I think, because uh, we don't want to make a bunch of these. We just want there to be one. So if it's a singleton, we're going to put the main constructor private, and we're going to make an accessor slash creator function. And we're also going to make logger internally hold itself. So to hold itself, we need to make this static. And to make this static, we need to initialize it in a C++ file. We're going to do that in a logger. .cpp. All right, so we include this. We uh, make sure we scope this into logger. And we essentially have most of a singleton. We can get rid of this static over on this side. And we can initialize it to null pointer. And there we go. Now we just need a way to set that up. So we'll make a function that does it. And we can take this a step further and make this a unique pointer. We do need to include memory for this. This will just make it a little bit easier to manage the memory. We can still return just a pointer like that, but this now needs to have a correct type over here. So we want an initializer function, and that's what uh, this is going to be actually, right? It's going to be some function that returns a pointer. Uh, we could just make it init. Now, if this is going to talk to that static member, you'll see if Watch what happens when we try to just instantiate this. Watch, let's go singleton logger equals standard make unique. One unique logger. Now we want to make sure we don't do this every time they call init, but just a single time rather. Uh, and this singleton logger, since it's a unique pointer, we got to use the dot get method to get the raw pointer out of it to return there. And since we don't want to initialize this every single time we call init, just a single time, we need to put a clause here. This little if statement says if it's not loaded or not something, if it's currently null, rather, you initialize it. And then you just return that pointer. 
So that should work for an init function, but I don't think it's going to actually compile. Actually, it should. Yeah, this is fine. Now, the interesting thing is that it returns this function, or it returns the singleton. We probably want some sort of macro that basically handles all this for us. So let's just like include iostream here. And let's make a log function. I think init's fine here. I don't know. I kind of like this being get. It's just that init implies we're not really retu returning anything. So maybe that'll be a little better. Let's not return anything on this one. And we will have a get method or a log method. Or we could just have an operator overload here. And I need to look this up because I forget how to do this particular one. And it looks like for this one, you need to do it as a friend. That returns an O stream because that's what it's taken in. That way you can chain them. And it takes, okay, so O stream. We're going to need to work with O stream a little bit. That's in standard, standard. And this is just how we're going to set it to default. You know, if we want to do file outputs, those can fit into O stream, which is nice. And they have a, oh, that's just the example I'm looking at. It has a date. For us here, we're going to be passing in probably strings. But really, we want to be able to pass in kind of any, I guess, any sort of data in theory. But uh, I guess that gets complicated pretty fast. So yeah, this will just be the log or the message. And then we need to create this function here. And at the end, we definitely need to return the O stream, the same one that was passed in. Because basically, we're going to O stream whatever this message is. And that's all this is going to do. Now, what this allows us to do is just call the loggers uh, operator. So if we use logger, we can essentially use this for anywhere where we might be doing some C outs or anything along those lines, or even maybe throw cases we could we could log there too. But we can uh, kind of make some decisions around this. And if we want to change it, we don't got to go to every file where we have a throw or a C out or an error or anything. We only have to change it in one file. So that's, that's the big advantage here. It makes it a lot more maintainable to say, hey, uh, you know, we used to do it the hard way, but now all the logs are in one place. So you can just call this thing anytime you want. We could, you know, there are other ways we could design this. We could essentially make this some sort of observer and attach it to a bunch of things and allow it to uh, observe events and log them. So we could do something like that, or we could also have it take commands about how to log but for now I think we're just gonna keep it a singleton and let people call it directly now this makes it pretty pretty global and potentially a little cache unfriendly so what we're basically gonna end up doing is we're gonna have some if defs around it and we're only gonna log in debug mode so when we build our release it won't even have any of this logger code so that will be kind of the main point of this logger and uh, see i got a lot more to do but we're out of time for this episode i'll post an extended version up on the patreon if you want to see a nice chunk of where this goes next and uh hear me talking more basically all right appreciate you guys and the support happy coding peace